Hey everybody, so about half the year is over, if you can believe that, actually a little bit more than half the year now. So I thought I would take a minute to talk about my top five reads of 2021 so far. And I cannot wait to tell you what they are. So let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing today? As always, I hope you're happy, I hope you're healthy, I hope you're safe, and of course I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three. Hopefully one I've recommended to you. I cannot believe that July is almost over. I cannot believe how fast 2021 is running away. But I have to say it has been a fantastic reading year. And I have loved sharing all of the amazing books that I've been getting and reading with all of you. So thank you all for watching and talking and commenting. It has been fantastic. So today I'm here to talk about my top five reads of the year so far. Now I decided that I was gonna do five. I was like, you're only gonna do five, Russell. And then I realized that that was so hard because there are so many books that I would like to recommend as my top reads of the year, books I cannot get out of my head that I think are fantastic. However, I did decide to go ahead and just do five, and I would, would love to do a list of everything that is right there, almost fighting its way into the top five, but I'm not going to do that. I am going to make sure that I just focus on these five books. So, as always, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please get these books from your local independent bookstore. Actually, all of these books that I'm going to talk about today are actually out and you can get your hands on them. And um, I highly recommend every one of them. And I've raved about most of them throughout the year as well. <laughs> so I'm assuming that you have heard of them, but hopefully today I will convince you to read them if I haven't convinced you already. Okay, are we ready? I put these in order, alphabetical, by author's last name. Um, so there is no order like this is my favorite read of the book so far, read of the book, read of the year so far. I am going to save that for the end of the year. So this is just the top five in alphabetical order by author. Now, the first book I'm going to talk about actually was just in my last video is one of those books that I just don't think enough people are talking about. And that's The Arsonist's City by Hala Alan out from HMH. I adored this book. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, um, I read a great article on it and her that just sort of inspired me to love it anymore. Uh, in anymore, even more. And I just think it is so good. So this is the story of a family. And it's a family that comes from a lot of different places. We have the mother who is Syrian, the father who is Lebanese, and the kids who are all born in America. And very much so they are connected as a family, though they have their issues. Um, and they are sort of spread out all over the United States and the world. There are three children. The oldest daughter, I believe, is in California. The middle son is in Texas, and the youngest daughter is in Beirut. Now, Beirut is the where most of this story takes place. What has happened is that the grandfather, so the father of the father character, has passed away and left the home, the family home, to his son. But he has decided that he is going to sell that home, which the mother is not on board with, and we learn throughout the chapters sort of the history of the things that have taken place in that home and why she is so connected to it. And what she decides to do is she sort of like um, manipulates her children to all agree to go to Beirut with their father to convince him not to sell the home. But the other part of this story is we get sort of this family saga about all three children, all parts of their lives, what they are doing. The oldest daughter is a teacher, but her 
and a mother and her relationship is a little bit rocky. The husband winds up staying behind. The middle son wants to be a musician, has been in a band for a long time, but it has never taken off. Um, and But he's really, really good with food and cooking. And so he's sort of giving up his passion for music and how that makes him feel. He's in a relationship. He doesn't know what he wants to do with that. And then the youngest daughter is living her queer life in Beirut and is sort of a musical prodigy slash um, she has a band that is just very, very popular and she is really well known for the music that she puts out. And But she's always been sort of separated from her family, not really been truthful about who she is in 100% authenticity. And all of this stuff comes together as we also get flashbacks on how the mother and father met, the relationships that really brought them together, and all the backdrop of sort of conflict in the region and how that affects all of the characters and their decisions and how they wind up in America and all of that. It is such a family saga and it is so, so so good. Everyone is so developed. The language is beautiful. Um, it is just a beautiful, beautiful book. So that's The Arsonist's City by Hala Alan out from HMH. And if you haven't read it yet, if I haven't convinced you, please let this be the time to read it and talk about it and recommend it to all your friends. Okay. The next book is another one that I've talked a bit about, um, but I just cannot get it out of my head. And that's The Living Sea of Waking Dreams by Richard Flanagan. Um, I have to say that I made a mistake in my last video. So this book takes place in um, Australia and Tasmania, okay? And I think I said Tanzania maybe in my last video when I talked about it. But sometimes I make videos after work, after working like 12 hours, and my brain and I are not on the same page. So Australia, Tasmania. Our main character is Anne, and this is the story really of her family and herself. What has happened is her mother is in hospital and is, is passing. Like her body is giving out, she's in a lot of pain. And really the doctors are telling Anne and her brothers, it's sort of time to let your mother go, allow her to pass. Um, but what the youngest brother is just anti this idea. He is not, act Anne and he have not really been active in the mother's life. It's the other brother that has really been there for the mom this whole other time. And he wants to allow his mom to sort of just get peace, right? But the youngest brother won't let it happen. He is fighting, he is doing, and he sort of like manipulates the hospital and politics and all sorts of things to try to keep the mother alive. But at the same time, parts of Anne's body are starting to disappear. I know that sounds weird, but like all of a sudden she realizes she's missing a finger, but no one else is really noticing. And then she starts to notice that things are disappearing around her. So the book starts to then focus on this sense of loss, the sense of loss of self for Anne, the sense of loss of her mother, along with this backdrop of the fires that were um, destroying Australia and um, Tasmania and really causing havoc on that beautiful, beautiful country. And that loss and how that environmental loss is going to affect us all in the long run. Um, Richard Flanagan, you know, he's known, he won the Booker Prize. He is a phenomenal writer. And he also lives, I believe he lives in uh, Tasmania as well. Let me make sure. Yep, he lives in Tasmania as well. Um, and he's just, this is just a brilliant story. I think it's a little bit of a takeoff from what he normally writes because it's got this sort of sci-fi element to it, but it's brilliantly interwoven and oh, it is so, so, so good. And this cover, at least the US cover, is just absolutely gorgeous. So this is The Living Sea of Waking Dreams by Richard Flanagan. I wonder if we will see this on the Booker long list that's coming out in the next few days. I'm hoping so because I think it's so brilliant, but we will see. Okay, the next book that I want to talk about is a book that I read much more, much earlier in the year, but still sticks out. And it's probably because I've become sort of a, a stand for the author because I have loved, loved his last two books. And that's The Removed by Brandon Hobson. This is out from Echo Books, and he was shortlisted for the National Book Award for Where the Dead Sit Talking, which I thought was utterly brilliant, but I think The Removed is even better. But that being said, I always have a hard time um, 
summarizing this book, but this is a, another family story. So this is the story of the Achota family. It's been 15 years since their um, oldest son was killed in an act of violence at a mall where a police officer saw, shot him and killed him and he was innocent of any wrongdoing. What has happened in that 15 years is the mother has taken on the role of really supporting the entire family. The father is dealing with Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, the other, the sister um, has sort of created a life where she is failing to connect. She was always sort of a very um, introverted, reclusive sort of person, but she's sort of failing to connect with those around her until she meets a man with a young son where she starts a relationship where that goes and how that ties into the entire story is brilliantly done. And then the youngest son is out of state. So this takes place in Oklahoma, um, but the youngest son I believe starts in New Mexico. He has been dealing with drug addiction for quite some time, sort of living with the ghosts of everyone in his family. But what's also brilliantly sort of interwoven through here is the history and this sense of the spirit um, as told through what happened during the Trail of Tears. And what happens is that sort of sits in the background of this family story of them all trying to come together 15 years after the death of their son and brother in order to celebrate his life at a... Um, gathering I want to I don't want to say the wrong gathering Cherokee National Holiday and they're all supposed to come together to celebrate Ray Ray's life um, 15 years later and it's all about these people and these relationships and how a tragedy can sort of spring spread everyone away but what what also happens is that the mother and father wind up taking a foster son a young um, I think he's Cherokee as well, a boy into their home while he is in the system trying to figure out where he's going to land. And it spawns reminiscence for the father who has really been losing his memories and sort of inspires him to sort of come back to who he is. He sort of gets that sense of reality back that um, he has been losing. Um, and there's just like this hope and this love. And it's all, it's really about all of that. But it, there's just sort of a sense of history to everything Brandon Hobson writes. There's like a reverence to tradition that just really sort of hits at the heart of his characters that I just find beautifully done. Um, I loved this book. I think that it will probably be one of my favorite books at the end of the year as well. Um, and it's one of the books that I've read that I can't stop thinking about. So that's The Removed by Brandon Hobson, out now from Echo Books. Okay, we're going to go completely different here. And this is probably my favorite read of the year that just sort of made me laugh and hugged my heart and just made me feel so warm and fuzzy at the end. And that's The Gunkle by Stephen Rowley. And I think every once in a while, for someone like me, if you've watched my channel for a long time, you know that I tend to read very dark books. There's a lot of sadness and tragedy in most of the stuff that I love. That's just who I am as a reader. It's what I've always sort of um, been attracted to. And I'm good with that. But every once in a while, I just need a book that just makes me feel good. And the gunk, look, just look at how fun the cover is. So it starts with a bit of sadness. So our main character's best friend, who is also married to his brother, has passed away. She has been fighting illness for quite some time and unfortunately she loses the battle. So it's her funeral. He lives in Palm Springs, and I believe the family lives in Connecticut. He goes home for the funeral where his brother admits two things. One, he would like his brother he would like him to take his children, um, his nie uh, the uncle's niece and nephew, um, and take them for a little bit of time in order for him to go into rehab because he admits he has become addicted to, um, to narcotics during this whole episode, trying to keep it all together. Um, so really, <laughs> our main character is like, I gotta remember his name, Patrick, there you go. Patrick is um, like, no, <laughs> like this is not for me. I'm not the one to do this, but he does. And if you are not aware, the term gunkle is for gay uncle, and that is exactly what he is. And he takes these children into his home and he just sort of helps them through their loss. 
as they help him through his loss. And we find out that he has lost a partner and ever since the loss of that partner, he's really never felt whole again. Um, this book is laugh out loud funny. The Patrick has a stinging wit. And if you meet Stephen Rowley, you just sort of know that Stephen is that funny as well. And so they just sort of go back and forth and it is so very, very good. But it is heartwarming and it's how people can help each other family can help each other through very tough times and there's humor and love and it's just everything you need. So if you have been at a point where you're like, you know what, I just need something to make me feel good. This book has a little bit of sadness. There's a little bit of loss, but there's a little love and humor and just all of that goodness in it. So that's The Gunkel by Stephen Rowley. This is out from Putnam and highly, highly recommend. Um, it, I was going through a really rough time when I read The Gunkel. It was just work had been really hard and there was a lot of stuff going on and i opened the gunkle and i was laughing so hard i was in tears in the first few pages it just helped me get through that time so i i just i recommend it in so many ways okay last but not least in this video alphabetically only is the short story collection filthy animals by brandon taylor now if you don't remember brandon taylor's novel real life was my favorite read of the year um, last year. Um, I think he is a brilliant voice in literature um, and I am so excited to see what he does next and I follow him on Instagram and I follow him on Twitter and I just enjoy sort of his take on the world. Um, and this is a collection of short stories, some interconnected, some not. The interconnected ones focus on the life of, I want to say his name is Lionel, but you know how I am with names, so let me check. It is Lionel. Um, Lionel is a young gay man who has survived attempting suicide and is finally getting back into the world where he meets a couple, a man and a woman, and sort of starts a relationship with the man that has all sorts of complications to it um, with permission of both parties and sort of how that all develops. And what Brandon does is he brings us into the life of not only Lionel, but both um, of those two characters and other periphery characters that we meet throughout the interactions of that group. Um, that to me was probably the strongest part of this because I really wanted to know what was gonna happen. I, I thought that that was very convincing. But there is a story um, about a lesbian couple in here as well, and I always wanna make sure I get, um, called Anne of Cleves, which to me is the strongest story in itself. Um, in the book that I just thought was brilliant. I sometimes think when I read short story collections, what stories are going to be taught for years to come. Um, Anne of Cleves, I think, is the one from this book, though I think the short story Fill with the Animals is also very, very good. Um, Brandon has a way of capturing people that is just so fresh and new and, and now, if that makes sense. Um, his dialogue is just so, also so just, true, true to the people, true to the character, true to the story. And he also can surprise you. You think you know where you're headed. You don't. He will do something that will surprise you, I promise. And he has fantastic fashion. Yeah, I love his duck shirts and his sweaters and all of that. So highly recommend Filthy Animals by Brandon Taylor. Highly recommend Real Life by Brandon Taylor if you haven't read it yet. But that is my fifth favorite and it's not in order, but the fifth book I talked about today um, of my favorite reads of the year so far, and that is the stack right there. I know that I always say, I hope you read them all, but in this case, I hope you read every single one of them. They are all fantastic. As always, if you are new to my channel, I thank you for coming by. I hope you subscribe. I hope you come to see what I talk about. I do love books so very, very much. If you are a return subscriber, I could not do with this without you. You are all the heartbeat of this channel, and I appreciate you so very, very much. So as always, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye, everyone.